This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. October 10th, it was cool in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Internal Affairs Division. The boss is Captain Bradley. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. When any member of the Los Angeles Police Department is accused of misconduct, it's the job of Internal Affairs Division to conduct an investigation. We checked in with the acting commander of Sunset Division. An accusation had come from a man in custody at the division. His name was John Meadows. His charge against the arresting officer? Police brutality. You men from IAD? Yes, sir. Bill Gannon, Joe Friday. The captain's off sick. I'm acting commander. How do you want to handle this? Some place we could use for an interview room? My office be all right? Yes, sir. Fine. Do you have the complainant statement, Lieutenant? Being typed up now. Have you had a chance to check Hillier's personnel file? Only briefly, sir. Brought it along with us. Let me save you some reading time. Ed Hillier's been assigned here since he graduated from the academy. Personnel rating reports put him in the top 10%. I just put through a commendation that should earn him the Medal of Valor. Served in Vietnam, wounded, decorated. Military service record reads as good as the one he's piled up here. College man, two years, happily married. Sounds like you've been keeping an eye on him, Lieutenant. How do you mean that? Well, you seem to have made a special study of this Hillier. No more than the other 200 men at this station. I make it my business to know about him. That's what's gnawing at me inside. Yes, sir. In my book, Ed Hillier adds up to an intelligent, dedicated policeman. Now, if the charge against him is true, the question is this. Did Hillier fail us, or did we fail him? Is there something I'm not giving my people at roll call? Is it the training program? Or did we simply misjudge this man when we said he was good enough to wear a badge? Well, that's part of what we're here to find out, sir. While you're at it, maybe you can find this out. Is it possible the department expects too much of these young officers? How do you mean, sir? How long has it been since either one of you been on the street? It's been a while. I don't get out there much either, nailed to this desk. But I hear it and see it every day. The name-calling, the verbal abuse. Today's policeman has become the symbol of the so-called establishment, the visual target for practically every gripe society has these days. I don't mean to sound like a bleeding heart, but it's true, isn't it? Seems to be, yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'll climb down off my box now. I didn't mean to put you two through all that. We understand, sir. You'll want to talk to Reed and Malloy, the backup team. Yes, sir, we will. I told them to wait before they go off watch. Yes, sir, that'll be fine. I'd hate to lose Hillier. He's a good man. Yes, sir. But if he's turned sour, he's no good to the department. Nine thirty a.m. Bill picked up the complainant statement and the arrest report. I examined Officer Ed Hillier's personnel record. We asked the jailer to bring the complainant, John Meadows, to the office. All right, you want to sit down there? Okay. This is Sergeant Friday. My name's Gannon. We're from Internal Affairs Division. What's that? Well, among other things, Internal Affairs investigates complaints against police officers, and you filed a complaint. It's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Oh, how's that, sir? Policemen investigating policemen? Let me explain it to you. We're here because the chief of police cares about your complaint. So does the police commission. When we've completed our investigation here, the chief or a board of the accused policemen's superior officers will weigh the evidence and make a decision. Now, Officer Hillier, the man you've accused, could be reprimanded. Suspended for up to six months without pay or fired. Or he could be cleared of the charges. But it's still policemen passing judgment on a policeman. Regardless of what decision the department makes, you're still entitled to file whatever legal action you might care to bring against the arresting officer. Is that clear? I see. Now, as far as policemen passing judgment on policemen, wouldn't it be a good idea to wait and see the outcome before you make up your mind it's one-sided? Maybe. We'll see. All right, sir. State your true name. John Everett Meadows, Jr., your address, please. 221 Garland Street. You ever been arrested before? Yeah, four times. You want to give us the circumstances? 1951, back in Omaha, Nebraska. I was 12 years old. I liked ball games. Had a big thing for the left field fence. 
The management couldn't see it. All right, Mr. Meadows. Will you tell us what happened at 221 Garland Street at approximately 1.47 a.m. this morning, October 10? I told it all once to that sergeant. We'd like to hear it again, if you would, please. All right, but first I want to make one thing abundantly clear. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm no kook. I work for a living. I don't burn draft cards, picket politicians, or smoke pot. I pay my bills and I pay my taxes. I just want to get the record straight, understood? Perfectly. That makes four of us. Yeah? Who's the fourth? Officer Hillier. More power to him. Okay. It's on the record. Now, you want to tell us exactly what happened? Well, there wasn't much to it, really. Not to start with, anyhow. We were having a few drinks. Six of us. Three couples. We'd work late at the store. Cliveden's over on Wilshire. I'm a buyer there. Men's furnishings. They were the people I work with. You've got their names and addresses. Good people, all of them. You say you were drinking? Well, yeah. Not heavy, just to unwind. Go on, Meadows. Well, I guess we got a little noisy. The old gal next door called the cops. She tell you she called? Yeah, so we broke it up. Well, started to, anyway. Well, how do you mean? Well, the first couple left, Ted Nichols and his fiance. Their names are on your list. Nichols, wasn't he the 502? 502? Drunk. Hillier said he was drunk. That's his opinion. In my opinion, he was a long way from it. All right, what happened then? Ted and his gal got in the car. Just then, Hillier and his partner came around the corner. Ted pulled away from the curb. His foot slipped on the gas pedal and he banged into a station wagon. It was parked maybe 20 feet in front of him. Hillier was just in time to see it. Go on. Well, we heard the noise and came outside. Hillier was already giving Ted a bad time. In what way? What do you mean? Well, in what way was Officer Hillier giving Nichols a bad time? Oh, you know, bugging him for his license, shaking him down, accusing him of being stoned, the whole stupid bit. And Teddy's not even feeling good. What happened then? I asked this Hillier for his badge number. He told me to read it for myself. Well, I reached for his badge, and he jumped back. Now, what happened next? Uh, now, this is when I goofed, and I'm the first guy to admit it. Hillier's partner had Teddy in the police car. I knew they were going to take him in, and that really burned me up. I started for him. I guess Hillier thought I was going to try and get him loose. Were you? Come on, Sergeant, be serious. With two cops around and more on the way, I'm going to try and spring a guy from out of a police car? It's happened before. Well, I guess that's what Hillier must have thought. But I hadn't committed murder, you know. So how does Hillier react? Like I just machine gun City Hall, man. I don't mean maybe. He was all over me. And then, wham, down I went. Well, exactly what do you mean by down I went? Exactly what it sounds like. Hillier slugged me. Where did he strike you? Right here, on the jaw. Did you request medical attention? Well, you bet I did. It felt like that cop tore my head off. What did Officer Hillier strike you with? His fist. His fist. And you say you went down. That's right, on both knees. Tell me, are those the same trousers you were wearing when you were arrested this morning? That's right. No damage to the material, is there? It was on the parkway. It's all grass. Light-colored material, no grass stains. You two just playing detective with me, or are you doing what I strongly suspect? Trying to whitewash this whole affair. Well, you said it yourself, Mr. Meadows. Well, yeah, what's that? Just want to get the record straight. Ten ten a.m., I called Cliveden's, the clothing store, where John Meadows worked. I spoke to the four witnesses. Get a hold of them? Yeah, they all said they'd be in to give us their statements. What about Hillier? On his way in. Should be here in about an hour. Backup team, Reed and Malloy, are waiting for us in the roll call room. Did you talk to him? Only to say hello. Malloy's the senior man, been on the job seven years. Reed's a probationer. Yeah. I don't know. You take a look at that, Reed. Seems to me they're getting younger all the time, Joe. Or we're getting older. My partner, Sergeant Friday. Speed Malloy. Malloy. My partner, Jim Reed. Reed, sit down. Reed, I meant to ask you before. Your dad in the department? No, sir. Wrong Reed. Oh. Sergeant? Yeah. What's going to happen to Ed Hillier? Depends on whether the complaint against him is justified. What happens if it is? He can draw a suspension of up to 30 days without pay from the chief, or he may have to face a trial board. Now, you know what that is? Not too much, no, sir. Good. Try to keep it that way. The trial board is three other ranking officers, captain or above. Board can suspend him for up to six months without pay or fire him. It's kind of rough. So's a punch in the jaw. Ed Hillier's a good man. Smart, conscientious, works hard, and he likes people. All right. Let's talk about last night. There's not a whole lot to tell. We were the backup unit. If Hillier punched anybody in the jaw, it was before we got there. When you arrived, what was going on? Hillier had Meadows up against his unit. He was shaking him down. His partner, Pollock, had the 502 suspect in the back seat. That was Nichols. Ted Nichols, that's right. 
What were the other people doing? They were drunk and loud. Any name calling going on? Uh, the usual, given all of us a bad time. Hillier's partner, Pollock, got out of the car and asked if we'd make the TA report and take the 502 down at the station. Said they had to drive the other guy to center receiving. Did he say why? He said he'd been hurt resisting arrest. Who said? Hillier. What'd you do then? We cleared the area and then went back on patrol. This Nichols, did he appear drunk to you? He was definitely under the influence. He registered .21 on the BA. It was a good arrest, Sergeant. All right, we'll go over all this again when you make your individual statements, but I want you to think carefully about what I'm gonna ask you now. Did Hillier seem upset? Did he do anything out of the ordinary? Reed? Not that I noticed. Malloy? He said something. Maybe it's important, maybe it isn't. Everything's important. When I first walked up to him, he turned his head toward me and kind of whispered. What did he say? I'm sick, he said. I'm so sick I could vomit. talked with Officer Ed Hillier's partner, Tom Pollock, in the Sunset Division coffee room. 11 a.m., the 502 suspect, Ted Nichols, was brought from his jail cell to the watch commander's office. Nichols managed the men's sportswear department at the same store where Meadows worked. He had put up bail and was technically free to go. Rough night, Sergeant, really rough. So we understand. I don't know what you understand, but I'm telling you, my part of it was real rough. I drink too much, you know that? Mr. Nichols, you know why you're here? Some kind of mix-up that has to do with Johnny Meadows, is that it? Yes, sir. We'd like you to tell us what happened over on Garland this morning. You gotta believe I was out of it most of the time. At least from 9 o'clock on, that's when we started hitting the juice. Just tell us what you remember. Beginning when? At the beginning, as best you can recall. Well, we were in Johnny's apartment. The stereo was going full blast. Everybody was laughing at Patsy. She's a real kick, you know? She does a great imitation of an opera singer. A real talented girl, Patsy is. Yes, sir. Go on, please. Uh, well, there's a knock on the apartment door. Johnny opened it. I saw this heavy set lady. She said she'd had it with all the noise and the cops were on the way. That was all I had to hear. As soon as the woman left, I grabbed Alice by the arm and took off. We ran outside and jumped in the car. I couldn't get it started, though. I was nervous, I guess. Just as it did fire up, I looked in the rearview mirror and a police car was pulling in behind us. Well, now, why were you nervous, Mr. Nichols? Simple. I'm scared to death of cops. Don't ask me why. I just am. You ever been arrested before? No, sir. I was raised to believe anybody that had ever been arrested was a bum. I'm no bum. A drunken bum, maybe, but not an ordinary bum. What happened after you saw the police car pulling in behind you? I was looking in the rear view mirror at that black and white car. And I stepped on the gas. There was a crash. And the next thing I knew, somebody's helping me out of the car. Would you go on, please? I've gone on just about as far as I can go on. I remember looking at a policeman. I remember walking in the police station. I remember blowing into some kind of gadget. Oh, I remember being here right now. That's it. Do you recall any kind of altercation? What do you mean? Anybody hit anybody. Well, it sure wouldn't have been me. I couldn't find the sidewalk. Somebody hit somebody. Who says one of the cops claimed Johnny hit him? The other way around. Johnny says he got slugged by one of the cops? That's what he says. I don't know about you, but I believe him. Is that right? I've known Johnny Meadows for over 10 years, and I've never known him to lie about anything. <laughs> At 40 a.m., Officer Edward W. Hillier reported in for his interview. He told us substantially the same story that we had gotten from his partner and from the backup team, Officers Reed and Malloy. Hillier had been removed from field duty and placed on station duty pending the outcome of the IAD investigation. We asked the suspect and his passenger to get out of the vehicle. They comply. My partner started to interrogate the woman passenger. I asked the suspect for his driver's license. His name was Ted Nichols. We didn't try to give him the field sobriety exam. He was so drunk we were afraid he might fall down and hurt himself. At this point, I heard loud voices and I observed four people, two men and two women, approaching from the duplex at 221 Garland. The person doing all the talking was a man named John Meadows, who we later booked for interfering due to the fact that he grabbed my partner's arm and tried to prevent him from placing the 502 suspect in our unit. You say Meadows was doing all the talking. Exactly what did he say? Well, the usual things, you know. Tell us. 
He called us the Gestapo, Fuzz, Stormtroopers, the usual things you hear. Said we had no right to shove his friend around it. He, Nichols, didn't do any damage to the Ford wagon. Was there any damage? Yes, sir. The rear bumper guards were sheared off and the left rear tail light was smashed. All right, Hillier, go on. Well, this Meadows asked me for my badge number. I put my thumb behind the shield and turned my light on. He reached out to grab the badge. I told him not to touch it, but to take down the number if that's what he wanted. He made a grab for it. He got the fingers of his right hand around the badge. I twisted away to my left, breaking his hold. I heard my shirt rip. That's when he said it. Said what? Called me a pig cop. Said all cops were filthy pigs and their wives were sow belly pigs. Those were his exact words? Yes, sir, his exact words. Sergeant, before I put that uniform on, nobody ever called me a pig before. Nobody. My wife either. And I'm tired of hearing it. What happened then? I told him I was taking him in for interfering with an arrest. He said, try it, pig. And that's when it happened. When what happened? I backhanded him. Show us how. I'm like this, with the back of my right hand. Where'd you hit him? Across the right cheek, lower portion of his right jaw. Did you cut him? No, sir, I didn't. He said he was hurt, so we drove him over to central receiving. You can check his MT slip. No visible injury. All right, Hillier. Anything else you want to add? What else is there to say? I'm cooked and I know it. Let me ask you something, Hillier. Yes, sir. Why do you think you struck that man? You're a good policeman, outstanding record on the job, and you know better, don't you? I guess. You guess or you know? Well, I'll tell you what I know, Sergeant. Lately, I've taken everything from verbal abuse and threats to being hospitalized by a guy with a DTs. In the last eight months, I've had two windshields busted out of my unit. First time, it was a 30 yard 6 slug. The guy who fired it just didn't like cops. Second time, it was a brick. Kid who threw it had to take time out from what he was doing, burning the American flag. I've lost count of how many dents we've had to roll out of the unit. Rocks, bottles, chunks of lumber, you name it, they throw it. The people we're hired to protect and serve. You guys tell me. I can't pull up an answer. Would you say that this Meadows could have been the last straw, maybe? Is that it? Maybe. When that guy was clawing at my badge and screeching at me, all I could seem to see were the faces, the angry mouths of everybody I've come in contact with the last few months. I guess that's who I was backhanding. Every one of them, not just Meadows. Hell, your, your personal history card lists a whole string of commendations from those angry citizens you have to serve. But if it didn't list one, so what? You pick up your check, don't you? You get paid to be a policeman, not to be loved. You don't buy that 100%, do you, Sergeant? No. I'd like a kind word now and again. When they don't come, I write it off as part of the job. When you first put that uniform on, nobody ever told you you'd be running in a popularity contest, not did they? No, sir, they didn't. Your PRR puts you in the top 10% of the department. Now, to me, that indicates a trained, capable, disciplined police officer, not a back alley brawler. You were riding with a young partner. What kind of an example do you think you set for him? And worse, you committed one of the cardinal sins in our business. You struck a man, and I'll use your words, a man you're hired to protect and to serve. Now, one last thing, Hillier, and maybe this is the most pregnant issue of all. These are tenuous times we live in. The young people in this country are groping, searching for a direction, and they're having trouble finding it. The older people in our society are not much better off. They seem to have lost or misplaced one of our great American commodities, a true sense of the real values, the values that built this country into the great one that it is. I tell you, I never thought I'd live to see the day that it'd become stylish to shout down constituted law and justice, to scream police brutality at almost every opportunity. There's the key to this, Hillier. When you lost control this morning at 2 a.m. out there on Garland Street, you laid another bruise on every man who wears a uniform and a badge. Your newspaper story will give credence to those whose sole aim is to kick authority right in the groin. And you've shaken the confidence of those who believe in order with justice. Now, a lot more went down out there on Garland Street this morning besides a man being struck by a policeman. But is it asking too much, Sergeant? What's that? The people. What about them? Can't they see there are two sides to it? Twelve noon, Officer Ed Hillier's wife asked if she could talk to us. Can I get you a cup of coffee, Mrs. Hillier? No, thank you. I'll make this as brief as possible. I know you men are busy. Take your time. We're not that busy. Thank you. I'm scared to death. I really am. There's no need to be, Mrs. Hillier. I feel that Ed's whole future is at stake. Please don't let him be fired. Please. 
Well, it isn't up to us, but he'll be given a fair hearing. I brought this. I thought it might help prove Ed's story. He thinks it's a blouse I'm taking back to the store. Open it, please. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Ed said he didn't think it would make that much difference, but I hope it will. Ed's shirt? Yes, the one he wore last night. You can see it's torn there where he wears his badge. Yes, ma'am. Well, that proves he's telling the truth, doesn't it? We're not questioning his truthfulness, Mrs. Hillier. Ed's a good policeman, Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. He's never made a mistake before. This was a big one. He mustn't lose his job. It's his life, his whole life. That's all there is to it. Six thirty p.m. We interviewed the first of the four witnesses who were in Meadows' apartment the night of the incident. Look, there's no question about it. That cop cuffed Johnny. What do you mean, cuffed him? Like this, it was with the back of his hand right across the face. He gave him a good whack. Was there any provocation for Officer Hillier striking Meadows? How do you mean? Was there any name calling? Not a word. That cop just hit him for no reason. The next witness was a clerk at the store. Her name was Patsy Cronin. Oh, I should say so. They always seem to get a kick out of my opera star impersonations. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You say you heard some name calling? I sure did. Johnny Meadows is a pain when he gets tanked. Call that policeman a pig. His wife, too. Want to know what I think? Yes, ma'am. What do you think? I don't blame that officer. I'd have knocked Johnny's head off. The third witness was Mary Kay Morton. She worked as a secretary in the store. I guess the reason the cop hit him was because Johnny grabbed for his badge. Did you see anything else, Miss Morton? No, but I heard something. What did you hear? The sound of fabric being ripped, you know, torn. Have you any idea where that sound came from? I know where it came from. Yes, ma'am. When that bonehead Johnny grabbed the policeman's badge, he tore his shirt. The fourth and final witness was Alice Jenkins, the girlfriend of the 502 suspect, Ted Nichols. Teddy told me he's sorry about that man's station wagon, but he's going to pay for the damage. All right, now, have you told us everything you can remember about this morning? Yes, everything. I'll tell you how this entire mess looks to me. All right, Miss Jenkins, go ahead. No matter what anybody calls a cop, he's no right to hit anybody. Eight thirty-seven p.m. We concluded our investigation of the incident involving Officer Edward Hillier. Tomorrow morning, we would reduce it all down to paper and submit the reports to the captain for processing. How's it look, Friday? Well, my guess is that he'll be set down. How hard, I don't know, Lieutenant. What's the bottom line? As far as answers go, the kind you're looking for, I'm afraid we didn't come up with many. I suppose not. You know, we had a pretty good chief that you served under, and so did we. Bill Parker. Maybe he said it best. We'll always have incidents like this because we have one big problem in selecting police officers. What's that? We have to recruit from the human race. <laughs> The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On October 20th, John Meadows pleaded guilty in Municipal Court, City of Los Angeles, to the charges of interfering with a police officer and resisting arrest, both misdemeanor offenses. On that same day, the Chief of Police of the City of Los Angeles made a decision in the matter of Officer Edward Hillier. In a moment, the results. John Meadows was given a 30-day sentence in the Los Angeles County Jail. Since it was his first offense, the sentence was suspended. The accused police officer, Edward Hillier, waived his right to a hearing by a board of his superior officers. In the judgment of the chief of police, he was considered to have used excessive force in the apprehension of John Meadows. He was suspended from duty for 30 days with complete loss of pay and benefits.